Hey, Frontline fans, welcome back to Comic Frontline and Fans. You're with me, Mike Spider Slayer, bringing you the third installment today of Comic Book Corner Classic. Yeah, obviously, you can see I had some time on my hands to read some good old classic comic books, you know. Remind me of the days of why I got into comics in the first place. And today, we are talking about 1985's Amazing Spider-Man Annual Issue Number 19 for the high price or low price of $1.25. Great cover here. You have Mary Jane doing the old Superman thing, put revealing a Spider-Man costume. And uh, you got to love the cover here. This is a great cover. And this is definitely a Mary Jane driven issue. And there's lots of things that happen in this book uh, that made my head scratch and go, really? So I will explain as I go. Uh, this book is done, done by Luis Simonson. And I'm trying to see the artwork is done by a different amount of people. Uh, editor in chief at the time was Jim Shooter. Uh, the artwork, the artwork in this issue, uh, I've seen better Spider-Man art. I thought at times uh, Mary Jane was drawn beautifully in this particular issue. Now again, this is a double-sized issue. There's a lot going on. Hey, if any of you guys are watching this, remember this, this right here, that right there. That was a watch that turned into a robot. It was like a Transformer watch. I saw that and I was laughing my butt off. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so the artwork in the in in this issue had their people, their characters made like a little bit of chubby lack of detail in the artwork um, that I found a little bit of annoying here. Um, there was times here where Mary Jane was drawn beautifully, and then there was other times where it looked like she did not have a face and very little nose, or at other times uh, she is being held captive. And she actually looks chunky. Uh, so I felt that the artwork was inconsistent here. And Alstar Smythe uh, makes his first appearance in this particular issue also. And I don't know if it's the way he was drawn. Uh, but he's made to be look like he is uh, chubby as well. Um, so I'll go into him a little bit. So what did I think of this story and what was this story about? Uh, in this issue, uh, we get to see uh, Mary Jane having relationship issues with Peter Parker at this particular time. Uh, you know, when, when don't they have relationship issues, though? But really, it's Mary Jane kind of accepting the fact that Peter Parker is Spider-Man and, uh, you know, not really being able to take it all in that he wants to share it with her and she she can't respect that, and she's kind of blaming herself right now in the issue. Uh, but we get introduced to a new character at this particular time, and this is All-Star Smythe. Uh, a lot of you fans may know him from uh, the uh, Spider-Man cartoon series from the 1990s. Uh, yeah, this is his first appearance here in 1985. He is the son of the original Spider-Slayer. And, uh, and when I first saw him here, I was kind of like, Really? This is what the guy looked like? Because he has this long hair, scraggly beard, he looks like he's 50 years old, and he looks like he's kind of short and overweight. Did I mention that? And in the issue, uh, they show him with butt crack hanging out. And I'm like, really? I'm like, they make him like, uh, like he's like, yeah, he's, he's got butt crack. And I'm like, what's going on, you know? So I'm like... If I knew that Smythe was this type of character and he was kind of a pervert because he had women all over his uh, all over his apartment building, I don't know if I would have named myself Mike Spider Slayer. So I, I was cracking up while reading this. But as we know, he takes you know he takes uh, into his father's footsteps and um, he wants to go and find Spider-Man. He wants to destroy Spider-Man because, it's, of course, it's Spider-Man's fault why his father died. Part of the reason why. Uh, because his father obsessed over Spider-Man. He didn't pay attention to his family. He didn't pay attention to his son. And he died from radioactive poisoning, uh, you know, from all the machines that he uh, created. 
and uh, the kingpin actually hired him uh, early on in this particular issue, but wind up firing him because he felt that the work was lack of quality. So that's when Smythe decided to go out on his own and create this uh, his first Spider Slayer. Uh, as a evil villain in the Amazing Spider-Man series, nothing much here. It looked like a uh, uh, like a flying saucer with some legs, you know. And so I was kind of laughing. Uh, but the whole thing is, is that in the last issue, uh, I think it was, or Web of Spider-Man issue number two, Peter bought a, a a hat for Aunt May, and it was this pink hat. But little did we know that it has a tracking device in it, and the tracking device was to I guess find out who Peter Parker was or whatever it was. It was to lead the Kingpin to whoever Peter Parker's secrets were. So uh, what happens is Aunt May's out to lunch with uh, Mary Mary Jane and Aunt Anna, and uh, the Spider Slayer winds up tracking the hat to Aunt Anna because he's trying on the hat, and the Spider Slayer takes Mary Jane for captive and uh, holds her hostage. And the great thing about this issue is what made it the Mary Jane issue that it is, is that to protect her Aunt Anna, she comes up with this crazy story. And the story was saying that she was Spider-Man. And that's why this cover is like this. Uh, so she says that she's Spider-Man. She's saying that I have this exoskeleton, that I'm going to, um, you know, I'll tell you where it is. Uh, just leave my aunt alone. So, of course, he falls for it. And... The whole issue, you see uh, Mary Jane, and here's one of those instances where Mary Jane is drawn very nicely. Uh, and throughout the whole issue, you see Mary Jane leading the Spider Slayer, Smythe, on this goose chase until Peter Parker or Spider-Man uh, come to save Mary Jane's day. And that's basically what happens in the issue. And he winds up succeeding over this the Spider Slayer, and it looks like and he puts him in prison. And it looks like Mary Jane and... Uh, Peter Parker's relationship uh, is intact by the time you get to the end of it. Uh, yeah, this was a really great issue uh, overall. I thought Mary Jane is perfectly in character here. Shows that she's tough, quick on her feet, willing to sacrifice herself for the greater good. And uh, she's just not some dumb model where she was made out to be in the current issues of Superior Spider-Man. Uh, so you could really appreciate her here. Uh, you gotta love the introduction to Spider Slayer to Smythe uh, here, even though he's like this perverted middle-aged looking guy that looks like a plumber. Uh, you gotta love his tenacity at trying to go after Spider-Man. Uh, takes place in his father's footsteps, and as the series continues, you can see the character definitely evolves and fits in more to the supervillain type. Um, I thought this was an entertaining read. Uh, the only nitpick I have about it is probably about the artwork uh, because based off of the way the characters were drawn, I think a lot of them could have been a little bit more streamlined and looked more to character. Uh, otherwise, though, the story was phenomenal. It was great to see Mary Jane the way she is. It was great to see P Peter the way he is, too, uh, for his love for Mary Jane. And, uh, yeah, it was fun digging deep into this 1985 classic of Amazing, Amazing Spider-Man Annual, issue number 19. So, guys, leave me your comments below what you thought of this review. Do you like this type of series, bringing back some of the classics? And if you read this issue, tell me. And, uh, guys, as always, thank you for watching Comic Frontline. And until the next comic book review, this is Mike Spider Slayer signing off, guys. Take care. Bye.